I definitely enjoyed my weekend off. It was much needed. But uh, my wife came back from a business trip and she was really sick. And now I'm feeling like I'm getting sick. But I'm getting sicker by the minute, to be honest. But I got a busy week. So I'm just gonna have to pace myself. So I spent so many years not being able to participate in my family's life that I make it a point now to start my morning routine after both of my children are in school. You know, it's like a nice little, um, I had to buckle my seatbelt real quick, gotta be safe. But um, like I was saying, it's like a nice little morning routine that we all have, you know, everyone goes to, you know, my kids go to school, my wife goes to work, and then I go to work. So that's really important to me because I never used to be able to do that. Um, you know, working in retail like I had my whole life, it's, it's, it's just a lot of various different hours that are always fluctuating. And, you know, if I worked the morning shift and I was gone before everyone even got up sometimes um, you know the 7 a.m. shift or 6 a.m. shift or whatever everybody was still sleeping when I when I left for work so only if I had a night shift would I be home to even participate and a lot of times I was just so tired and miserable that I didn't even want to wake up I just wanted to sleep you know to the last possible minute and then get ready and and go to work you know cuz I just I just wasn't very happy and unfortunately that leaked off onto my personal life, which is why I had to, I had to stop. I had to make some big changes. But so so the new routine is, you know, my, my son's bus comes uh, like, you know, just before nine o'clock. So, you know, the earliest I can head out is like 9, 15, 9, 30. If I'm all ready to go, my trailer's hooked up already and everything's good and I can just either walk home or drive home from the bus stop, depending on the weather and then head on out for work you know hopefully be on my first property if it's close by by um by like 9 30. so uh, i definitely get out earlier you know in the summer because i don't have the obligation of wanting to see my kids off to school but that's my morning routine and especially for my son you know my daughter's in high school now so she gets up real early you know we all get up early with her and everything but I mean, you know, she's she walks to the bus stop, you know, by herself, you know, it's right right up the street and she's she's done, that's it. So, you know, but our son, you know, he's he's in fifth grade, so he's still in elementary school and we still want to make sure we're utilizing the time as much as possible with him to share our mornings together and get him all ready and situated and develop good habits and routines for himself. So as he gets older and he gets into middle school, he can start getting ready more himself, more and more as time goes on and you know just go from there that routine is important to me you know for all the reasons that I said as well as I think it's really helpful for my son and I to have as much bonding experiences as we can even if it's something as simple as walking to the bus stop you know getting him ready you know 
in the morning. Sometimes my wife has to go to work early for one reason or another. So, um, you know, it's just him. It's just he and I, and and we, you know, we, we're we're silly. You know, we joke around. <clears throat> we still try and stay focused so we can get to the bus stop on time. Sometimes it's tricky because we're having so much fun, but just the littlest things like that can can make a big difference in a child's life, especially a son and his father. And you know, I didn't have a father in my life when I needed him the most. So it's really important to me to try and give that back uh, or, or pay that forward for my son. Even though I have no idea what it's like, I'm just going by how I feel and, and how I feel he would want to, to be with his father, how he would want to spend time, you know, with, with his dad, how I would want to spend time with my dad, I guess. But, you know, so I just go based on feelings and, and just enjoy the moment as much as possible. Um with him but so that's that's important to me that's my morning routine every every weekday uh, during the school year um. My new 22 inch Husqvarna uh, push mower, rear wheel drive. Um, it's got the larger rear wheels, uh, Honda engine. I have an unboxing video that I did about it a week or so ago. But this is the section that I really need it for that I have uh, that I have to actually pick it up as you saw and carry it up the steps, which is why I decided to stick with a push mower and not get like a 30 inch or something like that. Um, you know, right now I have it at normal speed, so you see me, you know, moving along at a, at a pretty steady pace. So, uh, you know, f definitely first impression, the, the speed on here is pretty good. And from what I've read, you can uh, make it even faster if you want to or slower just by adjusting the cable tension. So that's cool. I'll play around with that later. Um, but sometimes when I when I stop and start, it, it, it gets off so fast that I end up popping wheelies a lot. So I got to make sure I balance that out because of the rear wheels, the larger rear wheels, you know, give it that little boost as well. But the main reason for the large rear wheels is it helps it turn easier. Um, so towards the end of this video, you'll see that, you know, I try and do a couple quick turns um, from side to side, almost like. You know, like if I had a regular walk behind it and you're just like independently pivoting one wheel over the other, you know, one wheel stays stationary and the other wheel's moving. But so that the two larger wheels allow you to do that, you can just spin around on the one uh, rear wheel while the other one um, is just planted. So anyway, if that even makes any sense, but the whole point of the, the larger wheels is to make it easier to uh, maneuver. Um, so I can definitely notice that, but I got to get used to it because I'm used to always picking it up and moving it around and dragging it around because I just had regular, all four regular wheels on my last one that I had for like 10 years. So I got to get used to the larger wheels, which is why I got it because I wanted that. And then also there's the height adjustment, you know, that one lever height adjustment. That's awesome. You know, there's plenty of random little sections of yards, you know, that I still do with this also that I have to adjust the height sometimes or since the yards haven't been growing so much I've had to lower the the deck a little bit just to just to cut it a little bit shorter until it gets longer and thicker um, when it gets a little warmer and raining but you know definitely first impression this mower did really well this is some nice thick tall fescue on this yard here it was freshly planted a couple of years ago when I first took over this yard and it's just a nice little section that they have um, extended in their backyard that's raised up and as you saw with the steps and everything looks really nice but this is all nice new grass that he really took care of and um, you know I just got to push mow it and this this little mower here did the trick so so far it's awesome Look at this. This is a disgrace. This is disgusting. Look at this. I feel ashamed. I don't even understand. This one giant chunk was up under here. 
I feel like I haven't. I, feel, I never said I was perfect, that's for sure. But uh, I feel like I never even cleaned my deck in the three weeks I've been mowing. Well, this is the start of the third week, but I know I scraped and pressure washed underneath the bottom of that deck before I dropped it off to my dealer over the. Uh, over the winter and I picked it up and you know they sharpened the blades and everything and it was, oh, everything was good to go so I just hit the ground running you know I didn't scrape it off last last week you know I was just lazy I just sprayed it with the power wash like you saw me but um, obviously I needed to do more than that because that's a lot that's just way too much to be underneath the deck especially big chunks like that just clogging everything up that's that's really ridiculous I can't I can't do that ever again. It's going to affect the quality of your cut. I don't even know what some of that stuff is that's on that grass underneath there. It's probably not good for you or the uh, grass. So, <sighs> Live and learn, live and learn. You know, I normally have a spray that I spray up underneath there after I clean the deck real good. And that makes it like a slick surface and it keeps the grass from accumulating as easily for one. And for two, it's a lot easier for me to just scrape any of the grass off once a week, you know, at at, at the at minimum, at the minimum. Um, but I don't even, I ran out of it last year. I never got any more. And I just hit the ground running this year because mowing season came fast and furious. And I just, you know, didn't get those last little odds and ends. So I really got to get that so that I can uh, spray that on there and, and, and uh, make things easier for myself for the rest of the season. Gotta go to Lowe's. Gotta go to Lowe's. Gotta get some new bungee cords for the season. So much for that. I don't see bungees. Aisle 18. Nice. Aisle 18. Might be onto something. Oh. Remember my uh, trailer setup video? If not, check it out. This is the thing right here. That's what my blower rack is is sitting on my blowers on that bungees 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 so all these new customers that I've been getting the past couple of weeks are replacing customers that either have flaked out or ones that I've replaced given away because you know they're not as profitable or whatever the scenario is so that I can have the best route possible so I can create the most density in the neighborhoods that I'm already in so I pretty much got rid of almost all of the scattered yards um, but they're still relatively close to to where I live and, and where most of my yards already are so I started the season with spaces in my schedule in anticipation of filling them in certain neighborhoods. Like for example, I had said in previous videos that one of my customers moved out of my HOA that I live in and they moved into an, an, another HOA, you know, like 15 minutes away <clears throat> that has a lot of higher end houses, you know, half a million to a million dollar homes and beyond. It seems to be like that's where everybody's moving now. It's a really nice area, really nice neighborhood. They just keep building and building and building. So I assumed that I was going to grow in that neighborhood. And that's what, why I wanted to clear off my schedule as much as possible so that I could handle more customers in that neighborhood because that customer wanted me to still service their yard in that neighborhood. So that gave me like an easy in without having to do any kind of marketing. And you know, they're really nice people. They're, they were great, you know, the last two years that I've been taking care of their property, and they were all about spreading the word and their bus stop is right, 
in front of their house so all the neighbors and everything are always there so they're all about referring you know me and I gave them stacked business cards and all that so <clears throat> I anticipated growing in that area so I wanted to free up space for that as well as a couple of other HOAs that, that I'm in I just wanted to free up some space because I had a feeling that I was going to keep growing based on the trend of the last two years in those specific neighborhoods so like I I met up with uh, Seth. If you don't know Seth the Lawn Surgeon, he's on YouTube. I'm sure everybody knows who Seth, Seth is, but if you don't, check him out, Seth the Lawn Surgeon. But so you know, he lives in he lives in the same same city as me, just like on the other side. But so you know, we hooked up probably about a month ago or so, and we we met up for what was his dinner because he works overnights, um, his other job, and it was my lunch. But we, we got together, and we hung out for a little while, and it was cool. And I had asked him if he if he was wanted to take on any more yards and where was his area you know limits and things like that where he's gonna go because I had a customer that I thought would be good for him she's too far away from me to drive all the way out to take care of her yard it's a pretty decent sized yard but again it's, it's a true bi-weekly and sometimes she wants other things done and I just don't have the time to drive out there and do all that stuff when I have all these weekly accounts that are right close to, to where I live and all close to one another. So, you know, and I actually followed up with him the other day and, you know, made sure everything was all right. And he said, yeah, you know, he took care of her the, not too long ago and she's really nice. Everything's cool. And he was thankful and that's great. So that's, that's a good success story. And, you know, that's something that hopefully more people can do. And I hadn't had anything like that in a while. I kind of, I, I wanted to give her to somebody since last season but I just toughed it out because I had no one else to, to give it to so that's just one this is another example of how I'm try, trying to free up my schedule so I can have the right clients for my schedule and for my area so that I can keep growing and stay profitable been a, a long rough week I've been pretty sick this week up oh, hold up not my best but not my worst but um yeah I'm just finally starting to feel a little bit better but I still sound awful I'm assuming and uh it's been tough to film anything or do too much this week. I've barely been able to get my work done. I mean, I was really, really sick. That's the thing when you're solo. When you have nobody else to do it, then there's nobody else to do it. So you just got to do what you got to do. You got to get find a way to get it done or skip some yards. You know, make sure you communicate to your customers. Tell them that you're not feeling well or whatever, hope for the best, but I was hoping it wouldn't have to come to that, which fortunate, fortunately in this situation, some of my customers contacted me in advance and asked me to skip their yard because they're not yards that are treated and it hasn't rained a whole lot. It's rained like once this week and once last week, so it's barely rained so far this spring. And the temperatures keep dropping down into the 30s every every night. So everything's just been real wacky with the weather. We started mowing early, but yet, because it was warm and the grass was growing, but now it's cold again. It's like the it's like the weather reversed itself. You know, we're having we're having March weather in April and we had April weather in March. So now everything's slowing down and there's not as much cutting that needs to be done. Unless the yards have been fertilized. And they've been treated you know for at least a whole season those yards I'm still cutting fine because they're still growing they're still nice and long and thick green tall dark green tall fescue but other than that the yards are just fizzling out like it's summer or something like it's the middle of summer some of them are even actually looking a little burnt out but so that worked out to lighten up my load you know and some yards I visibly looked at and felt the same way and contacted the customer and said that I was gonna skip the, that those yards or whatever so I was able to reduce my workload by chance 
nature and taking advantage of the opportunity so that I could do the bare minimum just to get done and go to bed and go home and go to bed. But yeah, I mean, I was on the verge of like going to the, the doctors because I just, I thought I wasn't going to get better. And, you know, hopefully I am, good. hopefully I'm on my way getting better now. Hopefully I'm on, on, the, on the way up. But it wasn't looking good for a while there, all the way up till yesterday. So we'll see how it goes today. I was going to have a good weekend and keep recovering and resting and hit the week hard next week because it's supposed to be nice and warm. And I'm sure the grass is going to be growing like crazy, especially if it starts raining more than once, um, which will also make things hectic trying to get everything done. And that's it. But I still got some decent footage, I hope. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching my weekly vlogs. See you next week.